So um, my name is Anna Mullis, and I actually started working at the library the year the transcribe program started. And I went, and this is John Deal, who's also presenting with me. Uh, go ahead. So. So most of you are familiar with the Transcribe website, and as Sony pointed out, there's a transcription tips page um, that you can access, and it has some general transcription tips to give you some help tailored to the material that we have at the Library of Virginia. We've got. <laughs> um, you may notice a lot of documents that you find have abbreviations, and the abbreviated phrases in older documents you can You'll become more familiar with these phrases as you see them more often. There's a lot of common ones, a lot of names will be abbreviated, and some of them are more easy to understand, like William as WM, and some don't make as much sense, like John for J and O. Um, but, okay. Oh, is this what's going on? Yes. Yeah. So, we also have a lot of uh, military terms, as you can imagine, are uh, often uh, abbreviated. And so, on this slide, We've got some pretty common ones, uh, instant for at that moment, um, adjutant, brigade, uh, and various ranks like captain, uh, and that sort of thing. Another one that you'll always see in a valediction is your most humble and obedient servant, which we've got right here from a Mr. C. Uh, Derrick, who was a lieutenant colonel commander uh, in Baltimore. So you'll see a lot of military terms abbreviated and something that was also on that uh, previous slide is you'll see superscripts a lot of times. So at the bottom you'll see Robert and Samuel with the superscript and you'll see that in a lot of different uh, aspects. So don't be thrown off by the little superscripts which are sometimes kind of sloppy as people kind of do a little flourish at the end. So that's something to keep, uh, keep track of. Yeah. Another thing you'll run into often is something called a leading S, which is when there are two S's next to each other, the first S will appear longer and like almost like a cursive S, F, and the second S will be a regular short S. So you can see an example here of a printed version with the word Congress and, and the name Jesse that has two S's in the middle. And here's just a couple things to look out for because the double S can be a little tricky. So in this word, it can look like a P. So the first word is depositions, and then you can see the double S in the second section that's in the word witnesses. Um, but they look very similar, so just be aware that they will. And then, oh wait, <laughs> and then this is an example of one of the names of the superscript letter. But you can see with this J N O, the O looks like it's connected to the R of the ne the second word. Um, the last name, so just be aware that they may kind of run into each other. Okay. And then sometimes you'll see words split in between lines, so you can see the name Simpkins here is split and they have sort of an equal sign in between on each side. When you're transcribing, be sure to combine this word into one word so it'll become searchable, so that if someone searches in our database for the name Simpkins, it will come up instead of being separated. And it can also be helpful to compare words, but in within the same handwriting, in the same document. So this example, the first part section was a little unclear, and this author doesn't cross their T's. So the, the word, the section says "being court day," but the first one I was having trouble with getting that to be clear, and the dot for the uh, over the <laughs> over the word court was throwing me off a little bit. But it shows up again in a later document where it's much more clear. So it can be helpful to look throughout the same document for similar letters if you're struggling with letters in one word. Um, so context is very important when you're looking at documents. So if you find a legal document, it's probably not going to have the word love and sweetheart and all that kind of stuff. And if you're in a legal document, it's probably not going to say things like, land and therefore and whereas and all that kind of stuff unless it's a uh, unless it's a prenuptial agreement which I don't think we're going to run into with most of these documents so here's a good uh, legal document and again the context helps you with the clues and so we've got uh, where the arrow is PLT what does PLT stand for plaintiff, plaintiff thank you and DEFT on the right Defendants. These are easy. 
And then the arrow in the middle pointing down, it's a double S. What is that? Session. Session. Silver is right there. So session, that's one of those good examples of the double S. And then at the bottom, we have one of these fancy words aforesaid, um, and which sort of is already established. And so that's, again, one of those Fs that can look like uh, an S. And so again, it's a matter of using context to help you with the uh, specific words that you're trying to read. And as Anna said, learning the, um, the sort of the writer's style at the top of the document or in letters that you know can help you figure out letters that might be fuzzy. Because a lot of these documents, we've got, we purposefully have pulled some really clear documents to show you on the screen. But as anybody who's done a few of these will tell you, the documents can be faded, there can be blotches, the handwriting can be like mine, which is not very good. So it's always a good to sort of figure out the person's style, as Anna said. Um, another one with legal documents. And so here's one that I threw out, and we also have words that we don't always use. So that one in the top right, witnesseth, and that's to witness, and that's very much a legal document. And that witnesseth covers a lot of sins. The, the person crosses the T above the T, there's one of those pesky double S's uh, involved. And then we have, uh, on the left, we have assigned, which sort of, to, uh, which has been referred to before, and that's another double S. Um, on the right, we have half, one of those fancy legal terms for have and has, and he doesn't cross uh, the T. And then a sign, which again is down at the bottom. So again, legal terms can kind of trip, trip, trip us up because we don't see them uh, all the time. But you'll see them a lot in some of these uh, documents that you're going to be doing. Um, spelling. Who's a good speller? I know Silver is. I know Sonia and Anna are. I'm a poor speller. Um, so as, as I know we've talked about in other venues, these are real people writing these documents. And real people are terrible. We're terrible spellers. We get up on the wrong side of the bed in the morning. We have poor handwriting. So never, if a word doesn't seem to be the correct spelling, it's because somebody is spelling it phonetically or their education level is not high. And so here's a document. The first word, I sit. It's supposed to be sit, S-I-T-E, S-I-T. He have it, they have it as S-E-A-T-E. -E. And then on the right, uh, which came to hand a, I think that's few uh, days ago that you gave me great, G-R-A-T-E, satisfaction with a D, um, to hear from you and to hear that you was uh, well, when the well looks like an I, but it doesn't have the dot over top of it. So again, again, context helps you with the wording, especially in documents that are misspelled and, um, and that kind of thing. So again, context and spelling, and if it looks like it's spelled the wrong way, it probably is. And so that's something that you're going to run into with uh, these old documents. Think you're gonna, think you're gonna oh, take yeah. it off? And then and we have some helpful links. These are some really good resources for more information about transcription tips. A lot of good side-by-sides of words from documents and that you'll see commonly in abbreviations. So if you're, um, do we want to bring some of these up? We can do that. Yes, sir. I think we can hit the link okay. and bring some of them up, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So let's bring Perfect. It. There we go. Let's see if that works. <laughs> maybe not. So this one's from the Natural History Museum, an introduction to paleography. It has all kinds of stuff. Let's see. Yeah, so this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. So it has good examples and descriptions that you can be really helpful. And so the other but, um, sites are very similar.
Yeah, we can do that. I like this one because they're very clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the last one is another PDF style uh, reference. I don't know if we can get that one up too. <laughs> sure. This has an, an abbreviation slide that we use. Lots of okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that we'll see this in many of our documents, but this is an old English version of the word the with the English the thorn symbol for Y. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Do we do we have any questions about reading old handwriting or do we have any beginners that have any questions? See the question. When you see misspellings, should you make an effort to correct or transcribe exactly as it is? So usually recommend that you transcribe as it is. If you really wanted to adjust it to be the, or if it's unclear what the word might be, you can put it in brackets after and say this is what I think the word actually is or if it's really unclear. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Everyone's an expert. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, yeah. and uh, we'll be sort of circulating around, so if you have any other questions, we'll be, uh, we'll be around to help.